This video was brought to you by Skillshare. More on that later. All right, because I know you want it, I'll say it. It's Morbin time. Okay, we good? Because now it's time to talk about one of the more unique races in RimWorld. These are the Sanophages. Taken from the word sanguine, meaning blood red, these blood-drinking immortals are going to change your colony for sure. To explain, we need to explain what a xenotype is. With the biotech DLC, you have humans, then you have humans with gene packs jammed in to alter their DNA. Then you have xenotypes. A xenotype is a type of human with a set of genes that is common with them. So the genies are weak and small, the hustlers aggressive and great for combat, etc. So what are sanophages? Vampires, pretty much, though in the lore they aren't actually drinking blood, it's the hemogen found in blood. But I mean look at the packaging, that's a blood pack. So yeah, for the purposes of this video, I will be referring to these pawns as vampires, or some other nickname. So how do you actually get a bloodsucker in your colony? Well the easiest way to do this is to do the new start where you have a pawn with the xenotype and a normal pawn to act as a caretaker slash blood bank and start from there. Of course you can get one via the normal recruitment ways, someone wandering in, capturing one who happened to be with a raider gang, etc. The two unique ways to gain this power are the Sanophage transport crash, they are sending an SOS and you can signal them to land. Do not, they will be hostile, you will have to fight a now annoyed vampire and five of his thralls. By the way, if you play with ideal legions, theirs will have cannibalism. After you beat them down and hopefully not kill the Lord of Bats by smashing his brain, you can force them to give a colonist the gene and have a vampire of your own. Keep in mind that doing this will kill the vampire. Also, you can go with other options and recruit the vampire through there is always the chance of them being loyal thanks to the 1.4 update, so don't always think you can get a vamp recruit. So the other way to get this gene is the Bloodthirsty Parley event. Two of these lords want to have a private meeting and you can be the host. They will show up and talk and then leave. Usually the rewards are right to being one of their kind, but hey, since they are here, no reason you can't just jump them and force them to pass down the gift. Yeah, being a vampire lord, you kinda have to be a bit evil, but hey, that's the rim baby. I just want to stop and talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a site where you can learn new tips and tricks for life. Kind of like how you're here learning tips and tricks for games. This month I went back to the beginning and took social media success, video storytelling on YouTube and beyond by Lily Singh. I learned about the importance of scheduling time to feel inspired as a creator and reevaluated what my own personal goals were for this YouTube journey of mine. This site is super useful and I'm happy to say the first 1000 people to sign up with the link below will get their first month free. So what do you get when you are a vampire? Well, you get a demigod on the rim. Not kidding, you get a lot of great benefits. Most importantly, is so long as the brain is intact, your vampire lord won't die. Sure, they might be a little upset to now be cosplaying the Black Knight, but hey, they might have actually had it worse. Other benefits include being ageless, immune to illness, less sleep needed, improved skills like social and melee, better healing, and the ability to pass on your traits, provided you wait in between each gene share to recharge, so to speak. These aren't even in all the things you get for being a creature of the night. However, there are a few pretty big downsides. First, UV sensitivity. When this pawn is out in the sunlight, they move slower. They hate the sun. Not the worst weakness, but the bigger weakness is the tinder skin. 400% increase to flame damage on top of pyrophobia. Your pawns might freak out if they get a bit too close to fire. Might be a problem in a raid situation too. The final downside is the death rest. Eventually, your vampires are going to need to recharge their batteries in a coffin like bed to rest up in a death-like slumber. During this time, you can wake them up in your need for combat or something else, but doing so will make them ill and you lose out on some beneficial buildings you can take advantage of. So while you can set up your pawn with a simple death rest bed, why do this? Well, if your bloodsucker doesn't get their beauty sleep, they get exhausted and angry. If Van Helsing or Abraham Lincoln taught me anything, vampires who are irritable tend to be a problem down the line. You also may notice with the death rest research, you can can also make other stuff. These linkables improve death rest. By linking them and using them, you can make your already powerful vampire even more powerful. The Hemopump. 
will increase the amount of hemogen a vampire can have in them, which means less need to constantly stop for a tomato juice break. The Psycho Fluid Pump will improve the psi cast sensitivity. Great if you want to make your vampire a royal on top of everything with the psi powers. The Hemogen Amplifier will allow your pawn to gain more hemogen from any source so you can get your money's worth, so to speak. Glucoseoid Pumps will improve your vampire's movement speed after a death rest. And finally, the Death Rest Accelerator does what you think it does, speed up the process. Do note all these buildings stack, but your pawn will be limited at first. That's why you can find through shops or rewards the Death Rest Capacity Serum. No idea the limits on them, but the more your pawn ingests, the more buildings that can be linked to the pawn during the Death Rest. Also keep in mind, each building will permanently link to the vampire after the use and must be recharged with Hemogen. On the topic of Hemogen, how do you get it? Well, for your White Wolf game enthusiast pawn, they have options. One of the old fashioned blood siphon. The other pawns don't like being fed upon, but hey, it's quick and easy. Doesn't even kill the pawn. The other option is the get it through blood pack surgery that you can do on your pawns. It even can be a way to trade medical pawns and make a little extra money as the packs do have some value, even without a vampire in the colony since they can be used to replenish lost blood after a fight. However, me and my writer have a much better alternative. First, capture a prisoner, then give them two peg legs, then remove said legs. Now they can't escape. Then go into the prisoner tab and select the hemogen farm. Now just relax, when your pawns can harvest blood from them, they can take into account how much blood is in the prisoner. You also can do this but with a blood feeder, so instead of getting packs, just keep them as cattle like the Volkiar vampire. I'm so glad there is this option, because if I had to micromanage that I'm pretty sure I'd not even do vampire playthroughs at all, it wouldn't be very fun. Well I got you. mind hitting that subscribe button, really helps us out, most of you aren't subscribed. While you're at it, check out the Patreon, a dollar a month goes a long long way for us on the team so we can keep doing what we love. Finally, we move to the powers. What can your vampire do that a normal human couldn't do? Do keep in mind the powers do cause Temogen to cast, so use only when needed or if you can refill. First, there is the long jump. Given they get a bonus to melee combat, this is a great way to close the distance like a jetpack. You will be leaping like Golden Age Superman with this power. The piercing spine, where you launch a bone at someone surprisingly accurate and surprisingly deadly. Finally, the coagulate, a power to to let you quickly heal up open wounds in a pawn. Perfect if you want your vampire to give back to the colony who keeps donating to him. All in all, this one race is an extremely good one. Would I use one in the colony? More than likely. The difficulty is keeping them fed on blood is pretty non-existent in a normal playthrough and the benefits outweigh a lot of the cons. Heck, you can even put a vampire into a gene extractor and hope you can get your own alpha genes to put into your own pawns. So having one can benefit the colony in other ways. All in all, I can safely say vampires do not in fact suck out here on the rim.